Hey guys, it's Sharon coming at you with another video, and I want to try something a little different. I'm um, kind of inspired by Settle's um, Fire Cape um, speedrun video, and I want to try that myself. And as you can see, I like Venonatus, so I think I want to try to do a speedrun to get 1kc at Venonatus on a brand new hardcore Iron Man. Obviously, I'm sure something as unique as this has never actually be been tried before, so whatever time I get will probably be like the world record or benchmark or whatever, but I think it'll be a fun and unique challenge, especially with the hardcore risk factor. So let's get started. All right, so I actually messed up and was recording the wrong account, but you didn't miss much. We just went to the tutorial island. His name is Hardcore Speedy Boy, and we are on the mainland. This is my first hardcore Iron Man I've ever made. I've never done a speed run before, so my tutorial island was pretty slow. We're in the process of pickpocketing this man to get level 5 thieving and that's the first goal of the account and let's not die pickpocketing and lose our hardcore status already so now we didn't quite get to level 5 but um, I want to get to Artie so we're gonna run over there now but first I wanna bank this pickaxe and axe because we're gonna need that in a little bit down the road but yeah if you look in this corner it's gonna have my in-game time overlay so during my clips you can keep track of where we are at time played so you can check that out Oh, and we just got chanced again, jeez, by the mugger. <laughs> wow, I'm not doing very good on this hardcore status. Honestly, like, never done doing a speedrun, I kind of feel like I have, like, a sense of a rush, like, you know, like a general one rush doing this, even though I'm just, like, running to the arty boat in Remington. All right, and here we go to Ardoin. Also, I've jotted down, like, a small plan, but I haven't gone too crazy planning this out, so, um, obviously it's not going to be crazy, crazy efficient, and I don't know, like, exactly what I'm doing, but, um, yeah, I'll explain it as we go. All right, I knew there was a man upstairs in this house in Ardoin, so we're continuing our five pickpocketing grind. And there it is, five thieving at 19 minutes, the first milestone on the account. Now let's go to the cake stall. All right, we're going to go and get multiple inventories of the cake, because this is going to be our food for the entirety of this speed run. So we're just going to go back and forth banking these. Also, if you know my um, channel, I only play UIM, so it's actually kind of weird having a bank. Alright, we got enough cakes to give a small village diabetes, so let's move on to the next thing. Oh, and we're making a pit stop at this guy to grab some cooked meat, which we can turn into Sneeu later, which we need for crossbow strength. Alright, let's start the dwarf queen quest while we're here, because that's going to be really useful. Alright, the next steps we have to go by the dwarven mine, so we're going to leave off the cannon quest here. Man, this level 1 agility is pretty god-awful. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna start the giant dwarf so we can get Keldegram unlocked because we really need that because it has that um, crossbow shop where we can get the parts to buy crossbow pieces. And here we are doing the world's longest cutscene on a speed run, wasting so much time, but we gotta do it. Alright, we got done that long-ass cutscene and we just broke our first hour in this. Alright, I was just checking if we could use the Blast Furnace Teleport without going down there, and it looks like we can, so Blast Furnace Tele is unlocked, so that's going to be clutch later. Alright, and now we're in minigame teleporting to the last man staring Phyrex Enclave for to start probably the longest grind on this speedrun. What's cool is here is they have these pool of refreshments that restore your health and run energy to full. Alright, and here we go on Hardcore Speedy Boy, we're... Going into the wilderness for the first time. I was actually going to wear my hardcore Iron Man armor just to tank some stuff, but I figured that might make other players want to kill me. Also, I'm running here to the graveyard where the steel plate leg spawn is, and I'm doing this on a non-member's world, so there won't be any um, dragons here to attack me. So we'll run here on a um, free-to-play world, and then we can hop throughout all the worlds and pick these up, because we're going to need a ton of money on this account. We brought some cakes with us too just in case we get attacked by one of these things and I noticed even on the free to play world the zombies aren't even there but on the members world there's usually a zombie spawn here so we'll get attacked by that eventually. And what does suck is there's some competition out here with other people um, hopping and picking these up so might have to probably do this at later hours but I set my shift click to hop to next world so as you can see we hop and then once we're in the next world, we instantly click, and then we hit shift, and then it hops us again. So this should be fairly fast. And I'm sure hopping this fast, we might even hit that crazy world hop limit, which actually still exists, which most people don't know. But if you hop so frequently, you actually do hit it. And then, of course, i got to pay attention um, and when I run back not to run back on a member's world, because we'll get one shot by the dragon and lose our hardcore status. But let's do this. I'm not going to tell you how many I'm going to need. I'll... Um, let you speculate, but we're going to need a lot because we're going to have some expensive things. Alright, and then we just come back to the Enclave, bank those, and then 
hit our makeshift stamina pool right here and head back out there. Alright, when we store those, that's 100 steel plates, and we're going to keep on going. But just think, each one of those plate legs is a world hop, not including the worlds that didn't, don't even have them. So we're world hopping like crazy. And when we store those, there were up to 250 plate, I mean plate legs, and we're not even close to being... Alright, we've officially been at plate legs for one hour, because we got there at one hour and five minutes, and we're just over 400. So these steel plate legs are just about 400 an hour, which is actually better than I expected going into this, so I'm glad. Damn, and we just hit the hop limit of about 450 steel plate legs. That was that was actually longer than I even thought it was going to be, even though I knew it was a long time, but we'll come back in a little while. Alright, we're back from our timeout, and we are just hit over 500 plate legs, and we're not done there. Wow, I was tired and I forgot to hop to a free-to-play world that almost just ended the hard card status, Jesus. Up to 1k steel plate legs. Alright, if you look up in the corner, we are now 5 hours into this run and we are still just doing steel plate legs. Let's keep it going. Alright, and we hit over 2k steel plate legs, so we're not quite done, but we're almost there. Let's finish off the final strap. Alright, and we grab the two iron bars for the knight sword quest of the spawn. Alright, we're progressing further in the... Dwarf multi King twist. Alright, we started the Night Sword in Falador, so now let's head to Varric to continue it. Alright, we can grab our Pi Tin here for our Redberry Pi, and we continue the Night Sword at Reldo. Alright, we gotta get by these Dark Wizards, let's go. Alright, we need 10 mining to be able to mine the Blur to Ore. There's 10 mining, and we can run up here and pick the Redberries for our Redberry Pi. Alright, we came here to make our own pots of flour and make our um, red berry pie bases. Alright, we can't even combine them until 10 cooking. Alright, we come to this fishing shop and we can buy all these sardines. And then we can cook these sardines on this range and it's actually pretty good XP. Alright, and there's level 10 cooking and we have enough to make three red berry pies. So we can't burn them all, can we? Let's go. Let's get lucky, come on. First one, oh, we cooked the first one, let's go. All right, we're already right by here, so we can give this fat guy his pie. All right, let's grab two blurite ore because I need to make the limbs as well as finish the quest. So let's do that. And that's the night sword completed, which just jumps us all the way up to 29 smithing. Such an amazing quest. Okay, so we need to finish off 35 smithing so we can make cannonballs. So we're gonna come here to the mine and hop worlds and just repair these struts and that's 35 smithing the level to make cannonballs and all right let's head out of here we're just under nine hours in all right here we are at the desert leg shop we're gonna sell five worlds at each um si five legs at each world and hop honestly it feels like every single thing i'm doing i'm world hopping but let's see how much money we end up with and we're finally done after selling them all we almost got up to 1.6 mil which is pretty awesome we're just under 10 hours so 1.6 mil and a brand new Iron Man in under 10 hours is pretty cool. But let's keep on grinding. Alright, and while we're in the desert, we're coming here to grab our end game armor and weapon. I mean, what armor. And let's head back to Lumbridge. Alright, we hit up Bob's Axes, and now we're on to our next kind of long grind. It's going to be Fletching. We're going to need 54 Fletching to make the Mithril Crossbow. So that's going to be very essential. So let's start this grind off. All right, we're now 10 hours into the run. So if you want, comment your guess as to what time you think we're going to finish the run. We'll see how close you get. And also do me a solid and hit that like button for me, please. All right, and as you can see, we made 22K headless arrows, which actually got us up to 37 fletching in itself. Um, it took just over two hours, as you can see, is by the time played. And we're going to come to this guy, and we're basically going to buy a bunch of uh, steel and mithril arrow tips i haven't done the math but hopefully all of these arrows will get us to the 54 fletching or at least pretty close and there's 54 fletching the level for the myth crossbow and if you look we barely got any su supplies left we basically drew it up perfect we're just gonna sell all these to recoup a little bit of cash from that grind while we're here we need to buy some soda ash and sand so um we can get to 10 crafting so we can fletch um the crossbow string because all right, that's the dwarf cannon completed, which is huge because we really need that dwarf cannon. And we get the crafting XP that gets us to level 7. All right, now let's do the blast furnace minigame teleport. While we are in Keldegrim, we can buy all the pieces to make all the different tiers of crossbow that we're going to be using. Now that we're in the blast furnace, we're just going to buy all the ores from this person and bank them and go back and forth.
We hopped a bunch of worlds and we bought about 2,800 of both ore. And we just hit the 15 hour mark. And the best part about being done with buying all these ores, we just finished the last thing on the run that we have to world hop for. So we are done with world hopping. Okay, so we're going to use the blast furnace to make our ores because I think it's going to be the fastest way. That's why we only bought one of each because you get double the coal. You only have to use half the coal, I mean. But yeah, put our ore on the belt and then I'm going to use my other account to actually run the blast furnace for free so we don't have to go to the pump worlds and pay that extra crazy fee. And then that my all is going to get the bars to process for us. And to pay the foreman fee, that's 2500 just every 10 minutes. So let's see how long this takes. So I did about half the bar um, running the blast furnace myself. And honestly, it's god-awful. But it looks like I'm going to have extra money to afford the cannon. So I'm going to try going to the blast furnace world and see if we can knock out the rest of them um, with paying the, the world fee. This is um, way better and faster. Good choice. Let's use the rest of that money. And there's all our steel bars done. Um, if you look at the timer, we're up seven, 17 hours, 47 minutes. Let's keep going. And there's our cannon right there, and we're down to under 10k cash, but well worth it. Okay, here we are at the Edgeville furnace, and first we're going to blow our glass to get our crafting up. Alright, and that was fast. That's the 10 crafting, so we can now make our crossbow string. And now we make all our cannonballs. Also, before we forget, we're going to make our blurite bar for... Um, the Blu-ray crossbow we're gonna use. Here we go, we are 20 hours into the run, and these cannonballs are just so slow, and there's nothing we can do about it. We're at 4.5k, let's keep on grinding. And we just finished using up all our steel bars, we ended up at just over 11k cannonballs, and that ate up a ton of time. Um, we're just over 23 hours now in the run, but let's keep going. Right, and here we are making our um, Blurite limbs for the Blurite crossbow. And we're buying some lower level range armor for our range training. Okay, so we made a pit stop in Port Serum because we needed to get the raw beef for the Sinu. I thought it actually needed cooked meat, but it needed raw beef, so we grabbed that. Okay, so we ventured out to Shazian to buy these Lizard Kicker um, beers because they basically act as a makeshift range potion, so they'll be useful. All right, and we're turning our raw beef into Sinu, and we're using this weird range over here because you actually need to do Cook's Assistance to use that range in there, in the castle. And shit, I didn't even know you could burn the Sinu. I need to get two more, uh, more beef now. Damn it. Okay, we're back with Overkill raw beef. Hopefully there's no way we can burn all of these. All right, we got enough. All right, and then you need to spin the Sinu into crossbow string, and that's why we got the level 10 crafting. And now we can string all of our crossbows. And if you look at the range bonus, each tier of crossbow gives a plus 12 range bonus all the way up to plus 66 with the myth. So that is actually a pretty good bonus. All right, and here's the inventory, and we are teleporting to Castle War. Here's the spot. We're going to cannon these Castle War Orgers. Um, basically, every single ward was taken, so apparently a lot of people do this. But we have all our upgradable equipment, so once we get the levels for the upgrades, we'll do that. And there's 16 range. We can now upgrade to the Blu-ray crossbow, and that literally only took like 7 minutes. 20 range, we can upgrade to the studded chaps. And there's 26 range, we can now upgrade to the iron crossbow. Okay, so I'm not sure why my time play overlay isn't working, but if you look here, we just crossed over one day. So, so sad we're not going to get a sub one day. Um, speed run, but still looking good. 31 range, we now upgrade to the steel crossbow. 36 range for the final crossbow upgrade, the myth crossbow. And there's 40 range, we can throw on our D green D high, which is our final range upgrade. Oh, we just hit 50 range, uh, I missed it. And there's 54 range, and I think that's where I'm going to stop. I actually realized it way overshot the amount of cannonballs we're going to need. I wasn't even expecting to get this high of a range level, plus we still have thousands of cannonballs left. Which kind of sucks because that means um, we wasted so many hours doing these cannonballs and all this. But whatever, like I said before, this is more of just a challenge just for fun, not being the absolute most efficient possible. So let's move on. We grab one last little upgrade now that we have access to the range guild, the coif. And now let's teleport to last man standing. Okay, so if you haven't guessed it yet, we're going to be cannoning venonatus and this is our gear we got a plus 86 range there's a couple upgrades that we could get we could have got defense and got the started plate body for plus six more or we could have went and got prayer which would have added some more bonus but i actually want to keep it the 10 hp um one prayer just for the future of this count i have some ideas that i want to do and then this is our inventory the cannon all of our uh, makeshift range pots and our cannonballs so it's time to go kill venonatus um we're sitting at combat 
29, which might even be like the lowest combat level to kill Venon at us if we are, are successful, but let's go. We got the adrenaline pumping now. I feel like it's just scary just running out here now. Let's go. Oh, there's somebody who can't attack me. It's probably like a green dragon bot or some shit. All right, so here we are, and there's our foe. Let's set up the cannon here. I fire the cannon, and we run to the safe spot, and that's going to pull him over here. Um, we stall the cannon by using an interface stall, which is actually going to pause the cannon right here, which is going to let him run in there, which then we can release the cannon. Oh, let me turn that down for you. And that's going to hit him five times, and it's going to make him retreat because we're out of aggro range. But then it's going to go back, hit him one more time, which is going to re-pull him to the cannon, and we're going to stall it once again, pull him into that spot, and then we release. And we're just going to continue doing that. So since our range bonus isn't very high and our range level isn't very high, we're going to need some good RNG to do this. And this is going to be an extremely long kill. So my biggest worry is that um, uh, a, a count logs in and gets attacked by Venonatus. And if you don't know Iron Man mechanics, that's going to make me lose the kill credit because that ac account got attacked by Venonatus in a, say, 30-minute kill, which this is going to be... Um, will take a long time oh yeah i almost forgot to drink a range potion but yep as you can see we just got our first hit boom look at that a big 29 hit that's amazing if you didn't know the cannon hits 1 through 30 no matter what your bonus is or what your range level is so we want some big rng hits so let's keep it up some reason we'll be able to start fresh with the new spider without being worried about running out of cannonballs minutes in and it looks like we have pretty good RNG it's about halfway down it looks like oh my god there's a PK -er. please please don't get attacked by Venonatus shit uh, I hope we just logged um, I should log too because if he gets attacked sometimes it does like a splash attack and hits me too but I'm hoping this guy just logged out. We got really lucky and get attacked or we would have to start this kill all over. But yeah, being literally 29 gone bad, and I think we're 26 wildy right now, I am really not too worried about PKers for the most part. Yes. Oh, like I said, 20 minutes in, and our RNG 
was not as good right there. Oh, but right, right into a nice hit. Nice. Let's hope the next 10 minutes we'll have the... And there's that same dude. I don't know what he's doing. But two of them. He's got two buddies. Three buddies. I don't know what the hell they're doing. I'm going to pause the cannon. Just because one of these guys could do something stupid and get attacked. Um, I'm going to be ready to log out. Alright, they're all gone. Hopefully they don't try to call somebody that can attack me. Oh, double hit. Nice, that looks nice. We're getting close. Alright, we're so close now. Now I'm getting real nervous that we'll lose this kill count to somebody. Let's go, let's finish. Alright, we've been here so long, our cannon is about to break, so we're just gonna pick it up and put it back down so it doesn't break in the middle of the kill. And we're back to firing. There it is, I think. That's the kill. Oh! Why doesn't it say 1KC? Um, we definitely killed it. Uh, I don't know why it's not showing up. Yep, there it is. 1KC Venonatus. I don't know why the hell it's not showing the drop. Um, I'm just going to get out of here. Uh, let's throw in our helmet. Um, let's look at the time. Let's refresh it. One day, four hours. Um, let's take a screenshot of this. Okay, let's run down to Hans to get the official, the official time. But yeah, I guess I had the chat settings to filter out the boss KC. That's why the boss KC didn't pop up. But as you can see, when I typed it into the kill count check, one kill count popped up. So, and we obviously got the drop. All right, and there it is. We one at one day, four hours and thirty-two minutes. That's twenty-seven hours and thirty-two minutes for our Venonatus um, speed run. Um, obviously, it wasn't the best run. I know I made a lot of mistakes, and I don't even know if the method I took was the best method. But like I said before, I don't think anybody's ever attempted this, so this is probably like the world record. And I don't know, maybe the twenty-nine combat hardcore kill is a world record too because i doubt many hardcores kill it at all especially somebody attempted to kill it at such low level but this was actually such a fun challenge and i suggest anybody try to um a speed run challenge like this if you want to try this one i highly suggest it um if you want to comment what you think i did wrong or any ways to make it better um feel free to do that i'd like to hear your thoughts on that and also, I didn't make this account just for this. I've always wanted to make a high-risk hardcore Iron Man because I see all those people making videos on it, and I always enjoyed it. But I wanted to turn my own aspect on it because I'm such um, a seasoned 10 HP player. I'd like to really challenge myself and try to do high-risk 10 HP stuff, trying to take on the whole wilderness as a 10 HP hardcore Iron Man with one life. So I'm going to continue that series with that kind of content. So let me know what you think about that. And I appreciate you watching this one, and I hope you enjoyed it. So please like and subscribe.